What's up guys? Pancakes here with my first entry into my guide to uh, improving your game. And this is sort of something that's been requested by a lot of people so finally without further ado here we are and uh, the first part of this guide is going to be pretty basic and I'm going to go over my own classes and if I have some time kind of Actually, no, I'll, I'll say that for another video. This video, I'll just go over my classes and kind of why I use what I use. And so, hopefully this will be helpful. And let's get started. So what we have here is my uh, my first class here, which is my FAMAS with Red Dot Sight. And this class lot is where I typically put all my, um, all my burst fire assault rifles. And I have the red dot sight on it, and the Amis and the M16 both tend to be longer range kind of weapons, because that's obviously where they shine with their controlled bursts. And they also are very good at um, medium range, but in terms of close range type encounters, you're probably better off with a uh, fully automatic assault rifle, like the, uh, say the Tar-21 or something like that. But they're both very effective killing machines. Um, I always kind of have one. Kind of, it, it makes for a good all-purpose gun, so I always try to keep a class with one or the other. Some people ask me which gun's better, the FAMAS or the M16. I've heard that the M16 actually uh, does slightly less damage, but you know I can't confirm that. And if anybody, if anybody knows, I'm feel free to post in the comments. But if the difference is there, it's insignificant enough that you can't really notice it. So. I think it really just kind of boils down to preference, and I kind of prefer the FAMAS, so. It's kind of what I tend to use, and as you see, I got the Red Tiger for it, so. It kind of shows what gun I like. <laughs> and uh, I got the PP2000 with the silencer. I like the PP2000. I might use the Rafika, or if I feel like using a handgun, I might just whip out the Magnum or the M9, but I'm kind of using the uh, PP2K right now. And it's a good gun. Got the silencer on it because. You're probably not going to be using this gun at long distances, and so the silencer is a good way of being able to uh, sneak up on people. And I've actually, there have been situations where I intentionally, you know, switched to my secondary with the silencer so I can shoot somebody from behind without alerting everybody as to where I am. And that's actually something that's been helpful to me, and it's just definitely something that I'd recommend to all of you guys who uh, don't already do that. And uh, equipment, Semtex. I like it better than the frag grenade because the frag grenade, the blast radius is a lot smaller than the Semtex, at least from my experiences. And so while you can cook a, a frag grenade, it doesn't do nearly as much damage. So I like to use the Semtex. It's also helpful for um, killing right shield users. You just stick it to their shield. And if they don't have blast shield, they're probably going to go down. So it's uh, very helpful for that. Let's so make sure that when you do that, the riot shield user doesn't rush you because there have been times where they stick them and they rush me and it gets us both killed. So you have to really uh, pay attention to that. I use stun grenades. Flash grenades are also good. It, it really doesn't matter if you use one or the other. The good thing about flash grenades in this game is that they also give hit markers. So it's uh, it really becomes more of a decision of preference after that. And if you don't know know already, one very uh, effective thing you can do with um, with uh, stun grenades and flash grenades is that you can bank them around corners and kind of test where people are. If you get a hit marker, okay, so now you know there's somebody in there. And this is a strategy that I use uh, pretty often. I know a lot of other people have used this strategy as well. And if you don't use that strategy, I would definitely recommend using it. It's, it's very helpful. And on to the perks, Scavenger Pro. Scavenger is pretty, uh, pretty obvious. What it does is it lets you resupply off of dead bodies and that's everything ranging from just ammo to noob tubes to for me some taxes or things like that and uh... Savager Pro gives you extra magazines which is the same thing as um... which is the same thing as Bandolier from Call of Duty 4 so and given how I was a huge fan of Bandolier from the uh, previous Call of Duty games, it's only natural that I would wish to use Scavenger Pro. And it's definitely an effective perk. Yeah, Stopping Power Pro. No need to really uh, discuss this. Everybody knows the power of Stopping Power. One thing to keep in mind is that it's not as overpowering as it was in um, 
Call of Duty 4. And Call of Duty 4, if you went up against a guy with stopping power and you didn't have stopping power, and you had something like Slide of Hand or uh, UAV Jammer, you're probably going to die. In this game, not so much. Every gun can kill fast, without even without stopping power, with the exception of maybe a few. So, it's not at all a necessity anymore. I mean, you can use Hardline or cold blood and still be able to get by. I would still prefer stopping power in most classes, though, because the, uh, the difference is still obvious enough that if you run into a guy who's a decent player who has stopping power and you don't have stopping power, there's a good chance that he will still kill you as a result of that. So keep that in mind. And finally, Ninja Pro. And uh, Ninja without Pro is, in my opinion, not all that special a perk. Sure, it can make you invisible from heartbeat sensors, but that's not nearly as helpful as, um, let's say, a steady aim. But the Ninja Pro is where it really gets good. And what Ninja Pro does, as you can see, is silent footsteps. And um, I have a headset. I have the Trident AX720 headset. And it is a very good headset. If you don't already have a headset, a Turtle Beach, uh, Astro, or you know anything of that nature, you should definitely pick one up. It will make a, a big difference. And with a perk like Ninja Pro, not only does it silent your footsteps so people can't hear you, it also makes it so you can't hear yourself, which is helpful because if you have a headset, you can better hear where people around you are. And that's a strategy that I use. I know C Nanners uses. Actually, basically, like, most of the uh, Call of Duty posters use, which is to strap on the headset and just commence Operation Sound Whore. And, you know, sometimes people ask, you know, how I know that guy was going to come around that corner. That's how. I heard him come. And, uh, it's kind of sad that you kind of need to buy additional equipment to improve your game, but that's just kind of how it is. All the professional players have top-of-the-line headsets with, you know, things of that nature. And so, it does make a difference. You should definitely invest in one if you haven't already, and it will make a difference, trust me. And finally, Painkiller. I think Painkiller is overpowered. I think it's actually probably the most overpowered perk in any Call of Duty game, bar none. And uh, any perk that can give you a 300% health boost that pretty much makes you invulnerable is uh, overpowered in my mind. But I won't rant too much about that. Um... And uh, let's see if I can get one more, squeeze one more class, and I'm going to have to split this into two different parts because it's going to take a little bit longer than I had expected. So quickly moving to the UMP45. This is the custom class slot that I always use for um, submachine guns. And I like the UMP the best out of all of them. I also like the P90. And the UMP, I believe the damage uh, stats are 45 and 35, which is pretty good. The most assault rifles I think is 35 and 25 or something like that. And so it does more damage than assault rifles. It has a tighter hip spread and it has a higher rate of fire, I believe. Maybe not. But at either rate, it kills a lot. It kills faster than assault rifles at closer ranges. And so if you're in a map that, you know, is closer in terms of, you know, distances that you'll be shooting people, maps like Skid Row um, or which is a good one, Rust, I guess. Maps like that where you're going to be shooting people that are closer to you. Uh, the UMP-45 is a good choice. I also use it with FMJ and uh, Silencer. So it's a, it's a good gun. I definitely recommend using it. And everything else here is identical. PP-2000, Semtex, Stun Grenades, Perks. You can see them all there. Nothing really too special about it. Moving on, the ACR. I got the Silencer on it. The ACR is probably one of my favorite... Um, some machine guns in the entire game, and I should probably be appearing offline right now. <laughs> and uh, it's got no recoil. The damage is slightly less than the other assault rifles, but the uh, the lack of recoil does make it a, make a difference and does make up for it. And it is a very good gun. Definitely recommend using it once once again. And you see all the other um, all the other things I have in my class are are the same thing. And, Understand that even though the ACR does less damage than other assault rifles, it still kills more than fast enough. And as a result of that, don't worry too much about the damage loss. It's still you're still gonna be getting kills like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> and other than that, uh, I'm out of time, so we will continue this 
later. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope it was helpful.